नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम In the last lecture, we have defined uh, norm and trace of an element of a field extension. So let me write down the definition once again. So we started with a finite field extension, L over K, finite field extension. And for an element Y in L, we have defined two. elements one is called a norm of y norm of y this is by definition n l k y this is nothing but the determinant of the k linear map l lambda y and this is an element of k and the so therefore norm of l over k we can think it's a map from l to k y going to norm of y so what are the properties first of all it is obvious that if a y in k then what is the norm of a so for that i will have to compute the matrix of lambda a map lambda a is a map from l to l multiplication by a so any z Going to A Z. So remember A is in K. Therefore, if I take any basis, any V one to V n, any basis of L over K, then where will lambda V one will go? Lambda V one will go to A V one. So therefore, the matrix of lambda A with respect to the basis V, this is nothing but the diagonal matrix. A A A A A. So therefore, the determinant determinant of lambda A is A power n. Therefore, lambda A is A power n. This n is remember this n is the degree of the field extension. So for base elements, it is A power that. Moreover, it is multiplicative. so lambda if y and z are two elements in l then l a norm of y z is same thing as norm of y times norm of z this is clear from the fact that determinant is multiplicative determinant of lambda y z is same thing as lambda y z is same thing as lambda y composition lambda z this is clear so if i take determinant of this that is determinant of determinant of lambda y times determinant of lambda z and that precisely mean this formula so it's a multiplicative map from l to l it preserves multiplication in other words and lambda z uh, the norm of zero is what is norm of zero is zero because it is the determinant of the zero matrix so actually one should say one so uh, therefore you can think norm is a map from l cross to l cross and this is a group homomorphism all right now about the trace so trace what was trace of y that is also same notation this is by definition the trace of this matrix lambda y so first of all note that what will be the trace of an element in k if a is in k then the trace is nothing but n times a because the matrix is a diagonal matrix in this case with respect to any basis diagonal matrix with entries a so therefore trace is n times a moreover it is k linear so that means 
ट्रेस ऑफ एल ओवर के वाई प्लस जेड इज सेम थिंग एज ट्रेस एल के वाई प्लस ट्रेस एल के जेड सो देर फोर ट्रेस इज ए लीनियर मैप फ्रॉम एल टू के दिस ट्रेस इज एन एलिमेंट इन के सो देर फोर इट इज ए के लीनियर मैप फ्रॉम एल टू के linear therefore it is also called a linear form it's therefore it is a linear form on the vector space l so therefore it is also called a trace form this is the reason it is called a trace form trace form and this is very important to study separability but um, i don't need it right now i it's more important for us to prove now what are the formulas if you assume the extension is galois then can we say something more about uh, computation of norm and trace in terms of the galois group so all our methods should address always something about field extension in terms of the groups and conversely that is always our motto in this course so i will write corollary corollary 1 to our theorem which we proved which described minimal polynomial characteristic polynomial and also which said when can uh, l be simple that is if and only if the isotropy is trivial so l over k uh, corollary 1 uh, l over k let us Take L over K to be finite Galois extension. And Y is an element in L. Then I want to write down the formulas for the norm and trace. Norm of Y is nothing but, which is by definition it was the determinant of Y, which is nothing but product sigma in G. sigma y so if you know y and if you know the galois group you can compute it easily trace of y is the sum of the sigma y's where sigma is in g and how do you prove this so this simply follows so proof immediate from the equation characteristic polynomial of y equal to the product sigma in g x minus sigma y because what is the norm norm is the determinant up to a sign and trace is the second coefficient but this is as i said to check in the last lecture this is lambda chi of lambda y so once you know this the what is the uh, constant term that is you have to put x equal to 0 but that is precisely this i think i have to write sign here so that sign will be minus 1 power n where n is the degree of this field extension which is also equal to the cardinality of g because we are assuming it is a galois extension and g is g is the galois group of l over k okay and this one is clear that is the second question so this is also the minus sign all right so these are the formulas for the trace and norm now what we have kept pending is the galois field uh, finite galois extensions has a primitive element so that i want to deduce now so i will call it a corollary 2 let l over k 
be a finite galois extension with galois group g with g equal to gal l over k and what do we want to prove we want to prove that uh, g is uh, we want to prove that it is a simple extension so then there are elements x in l such that isotropy at x is a trivial remember if we prove this so i will just note it here remember that from the last lectures these proofs this will prove kx equal to l that is l is l over k is simple with primitive element x note that i will also keep using the term x is a k algebra generator of y uh, l of l so this will prove our observation so i want to prove the i want to choose an element x i want to show that existence of elements so that the isotropy is trivial this is very simple again let us prove this again okay. so i want to remind you what i am going to use in the proof we will use the following thing again from linear algebra so we have a finite so let v be a finite dimensional k vector space where k is now let us assume infinite field actually it is not really fully needed to assume k is infinite what is needed is um, let me see what is needed is uh, i am assuming it is a finite dimensional vector space so let us assume that the dimension of v over k is n and then i will need to assume that this field k has cardinality bigger than n that is enough this is enough but assume it is infinite if one want to do it uh, little bit more okay then what do i want to say if you have a finite dimensional vector space or an infinite field and let w1 to w m be proper subspaces of v proper subspaces that means no wi is va so that is wi is properly contained in v for all i then the union w1 union 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 wm this is a proper subset of v this union may not be a subspace so i can only say it's a proper subset so that means i can find an element in v which is not in the union and um, i will simply uh, tell you the proof of this pictorially and i assume that you know this proof from linear algebra but the idea is the following see if suppose 
let us take k equal to r so that I can draw the picture. So I have a two dimensional vector space that is V is R2, the real plane. This is my vector space. And now what are the proper subspaces? They are precisely the lines passing through the origin. And if I take finitely many lines, I still have element outside the union, namely this. The finitely many lines will never cover the whole plane. That is the proof of this. It's very easy. So I will assume that you know this side and uh, resume to the proof of corollary 2. I am looking for x so that the isotropy is trivial. So proof of corollary 2. So what am I looking for? I am looking for element x in L such that the isotropy at x is trivial. This is what I want to prove. So I am looking at this subset. This is a subset of L. And what do I want to prove? I want to prove that this subset is non-empty. This is what I want to prove. This is need to be proved. Once I prove this, what does that mean? There is some element x whose isotropy is trivial and that's what we wanted. So I want to prove this is non-empty set. All right. So what should I prove? Um, okay, so I will prove that uh, the complement. So, what is this set? First of all, let us describe what is this set. This set is what? That means uh, no sigma should fix, there should be uh, sigma. No, see isotropy is trivial means what? Let us write down the definition of isotropy. This is all those sigma in G such that sigma x is x. All right. So I should prove that if I take the intersection, let us look at the intersection of this intersection is running over sigma in G and sigma not equal to id. Okay, and all those x such that sigma x is minus x is not 0. This means what? This means, this precisely means sigma x is not x. That means this x is not in this x, x is not fixed by sigma. This means x is not fixed by sigma. And if I take intersection, that means this x is not fixed by any sigma. Right? That means it is fixed only by identity. And that will mean that for this x, g x is identity. So, these two sets are equal. That clear? And why, what is the advantage? The advantage is the following. Okay, before I uh, go on, so we want to prove this set is non-empty. If I want to prove this set is non-empty, I will prove that the complement of this set is. If I want to prove this set is non-empty, what do I have to prove? Complement. So. If I want to take the complement of this, that will become union and then the complement. So, this is complement of whom? This is, let me write down, then it will be clear. This is same thing as complement. So, C is for complement of the union. This intersection is becoming union. Union is over sigma in G, sigma not equal to IDL. And this complement of this is what? all those elements x in G such that sigma x equal to x. 
this is a complement and i want to prove this complement is non empty because i wrote this equal to this equal to this because if i take complement of the union this union will become intersection and the complement condition is not equal so therefore we need to prove that this is non empty so i will prove this is non empty so this is non empty this is what we will prove all right now what is the advantage advantage is the following so that means what i have to check what is this subset so now what is this the last subset it is the complement of whom complement of this the g is a finite union this g is a galva group of a galva extension so let me write the last one i want to prove this once again i will write on this page so complement of union sigma in g sigma not equal to idl and all those x in g such that sigma x equal to x now let us give this this guy's name this one i want to give a name to be it depends only on sigma all those elements which fix a sigma let us give names w sigma so w sigma sigma is varying in g g is a finite group and w sigma is clearly subspace so this is subspace of k subspace of of l in fact it is a kernel of sigma minus idl sigma is a linear map sigma is an algebra automorphism there in particular it is a linear map id is a linear map the difference is also linear map so it makes sense to talk about kernel of this sigma minus idl is a linear map from l to l k linear map and therefore it makes sense to talk about the kernel and kernel this is a subspace of l so there are so many subspaces and sigma is not identity we are taking sigma not identity so this w sigma is definitely not whole l this is because sigma is not identity because if sigma is uh, when will this be equal that means sigma x equal to x for all x but that will mean sigma is identity but sigma is not identity therefore these are finitely many subspaces of this vector space and now i want to divide proof in two parts when the base field is infinite or base field is finite so case 1 k is infinite then what do we know we know that if i take this w sigma union w sigma sigma varies in g this is also proper subset of this v is l this is by observation in linear algebra but that will mean that i can choose an element x here which is not here so therefore there exist x in l which is not in the union of w sigma but by definition that x the isotropy at x will be identity only so that proves case 2 case 2 is even more simpler i don't have to use all the above argument so k is finite and l over k is also finite therefore l is also finite field and not only that then i know that this k l cross is a cyclic group because it's a multiplicative group of a finite field and therefore there is a generator so let x in l cross be a generator of l cross what does that mean 
that means every element of L is a power of x. So, this means this L cross is precisely identity that is 1 x x square and can't go on long because L is a finite field. So, it will go on to x power uh, q minus 1 where q is the cardinality of L. But then, but then this L, this x is a primitive element, because, but then L will be equal to k, k adjoin x, because this already contains all the powers of x. Therefore, these are equal. So, therefore, x is a primitive element of of L over K. So, in both the cases we have proved that every finite extension which is Galva has a primitive element. So, therefore, I will write once more it is very 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 important observation what we have proved is every finite Galois extension L over K has a primitive element. There may be many primitive elements, there may not be one like a, a group can have, a cyclic group can have more than one generator. This theorem is called theorem of primitive elements. This was one of the main, main observation of Galois when he created a Galois theory. So, uh, because of that, so therefore what we have completed our definition of Galois extension that shows that Galois extension has a primitive element and once you know it has a primitive element, now the problem is how do you find the primitive element. Because once you find a primitive element, then we know how to calculate the Galois group because the Galois group will precisely map primitive element to the other root of the minimal polynomial of that primitive element. So, it is very very important if one wants to do algorithms, one wants to write computer algorithms to find primitive element, it is very very important to know how, what is the recipe. So, it is uh, most of the time it is not very easy to find a primitive element and how do you find a primitive element that the best way is the proof I gave. That means, we have a finite dimensional vector space, we have finitely many proper subspaces and from that we have to choose an element outside that. So, actually this is a very very good algorithm because all that it, you have to find is you have to find those subspaces and find an element outside their union. So, uh, we will continue in the next time. Uh, next time, so, so far we have only defined Galois extension in the case where the field extension is finite. Now, earlier also I made this comment, now your if your field extension is not finite, then one would like to have alternative definitions. In other words, even for finite extension, I want to find equivalent definitions or equivalent conditions so that the field extension is Galois. We have only our definition of Galois extension is only a numerical definition. It only says the Galois group and the degree of the field extension, these two numbers are equal. So, now I will one definition we will have by using the group action and the other definition which is used in the most of the textbooks that is normal separable that will also be another definition. In addition to this I want to also define a Galois extension in case when the field extension is not algebraic also or even algebraic but not finite and eventually I would like to have a definition 
where the field extension is not even algebraic. So, because remember that we have defined a Galois group even when the field extension is not algebraic, because we are only saying that look at the algebra automo k algebra automorphism of the bigger field, and this definition does not require algebraic. Okay, thank you.